Hey everybody, Glenn here. Hey, it's good to see you again with the uh, tips and tricks from the couch. You're probably asking yourself, why am I holding a bass? Well, uh, I was in a jazz trio playing the Sheridan every Friday night for over two years uh, up in Massachusetts in Plymouth, Mass with a couple of great guys, Stan on drums and vocals and Steve on bass. Steve happened to be a killer blues and southern rock guitarist. Matter of fact, he played in a band that did a lot of Skinner and 38 Special and Allman Brothers and stuff like that. But uh, Steve's big thing was he was into Cream and a lot of, uh, you know, he liked the Butterfield Blues Band as well, even though they weren't a power trio, but he liked the power trio format and wanted to start a band doing that. And I said, great, you know, go for it. He goes, yeah, but you're gonna be in it. And I said, well, what am I gonna do? I'm a guitarist. So you're gonna play bass, and um, I said okay, and, and he said, and you're gonna sing, lead. So um, we went on to play for a couple of years. Like Friday nights we played the Sheridan uh, in our tuxedos, and Saturday nights we'd be in you know cut off t-shirts and jeans, and we'd play at uh, biker bars. We played near the Air Force Base, so we actually even cut a um, EP that we we put out locally for some people, and it's it's some of the stuffs out there on SoundCloud if you want to hear it. But the number one rule I learned, and I had a lot of um, uh, coaching from Steve, but the number one rule I learned is that I couldn't approach the bass the way I did a guitar. So for the guitarists out there that are thinking about playing bass, don't play lead bass, okay? And you know what I mean by that. The, you know, if you're, you're in, a, you're in a, a, a trio situation or a quartet, uh, quintet, doesn't matter, Lay it down, lock in with the drummer. Um, you you want to really lay down a good solid bottom end. Um, the second thing I learned is that by playing a lot of turnarounds and um, intros and things like that, it kind of opened up some doors for me as a guitarist to be more sympathetic to what other people were playing. So it helped me uh, by playing the bass to be a better guitar player. So even if your goal isn't to go out and play bass live in front of an audience. You may want to do your own home recording, things like that. Um, learn to complement your guitar playing by, by being a bass player. So buy a bass, you don't have to spend a fortune. Uh, this, this is a, a Fender jazz bass, it's a Mexican um, jazz bass, and it's really a nice instrument. I like the way it sounds. I love the neck, doesn't have a lot of finish on it. And today I'm playing through a uh, Mark bass combo uh, 250. It's the Jeff Berlin model, which um, has some really cool features on it. I'm still working out the kinks on how to get the best optimal sound out of it. So uh, bear with me on the sound here today. But today I want to talk about something that I'm working with a student on. He's an older gentleman that plays in a combo outside of Orlando. And um, most of his band or snowbirds are back up north now. Uh, but he wanted to learn some different techniques to expand his bass playing. So I've been doing certain things with that. He brings me songs. I work through those songs and then we, I kind of um, embellish on that by giving him some ideas on how to play some things better. One of the things that we're um, exploring is utilizing ghost notes to give you a percussive nature to your playing. So this is going to be a quick tip today and something that somebody might get out of this. If nobody gets anything out of it or watches it, it's fine. I'm having fun anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, let's take your first finger on the third fret, third string, and you're going to play that, that C. So what you're going to do is take your third or your pinky, go up to the fifth fret, first string, play the octave C, come down, you've got the G on the fifth fret, second string, and then back to that root in the C. So the line we're gonna do here is, but what we're gonna do is we're going to barely play the octave C and we're going to ghost the G. Now this is the way it should sound. So think of it, you know, I like to think of it as envision like I tell students bunny something. Boom, dip a doom, boom, dip a doom. Boom, dip it, doom. And you can use that in, you know. Now it's up to you how much muting you want to do and how much note you want to release. So the best thing to do is 
uh, grab a metronome app on your phone. Uh, I use Pro Metronome a lot for my students and for myself. And start off very slow. So you want to... And you can go up chromatically with it. So let's say you're playing sort of a funky line, um, you know, it's one, four, five in G, and you've got a really cool groove going in the G. So that's the way you can kind of utilize that. And that wasn't perfect, but you want to experiment with that. So as a recap, you want to basically your first finger on the third fret, third string, C, pinky or third, depending, I have small hands, on the octave C, and then you're going to ghost the G on the second string, fifth fret. So it sounds like this. So I hope that helps out somebody today, and um, I'll throw up some more tips and tricks, and if there's something specific you want to uh, explore, just let me know. I'll put this up on YouTube and tag it and, and see if anybody has any questions, but um, I'm going to explore more bass tips and um, some more ukulele tips as well for people that want to work on their uke skills. Actually, it's ukulele is the proper pronunciation for that. So, but. Um, Make it a great day. Thanks for checking it out and God bless.